float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And don't forget, one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time. Don't count the days, make the days count. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And everybody thinks that every champion was once a contender who refused to give up. Hello, and in today's video, we're doing score predictions for match day three of the 2020-21 to 22 season in the Premier League. And that was the theme of the week. It's boxing. And can there be some knockout blows in this round of fixtures? Well, it'll be really interesting to see the red corner and the blue corner face up against each other. Um, and uh, what kind of action we'll be getting in the ring. But no, in a serious note. Let's not see too many red cards this week. Um, I know players can get carried away, but you know we've got to put ha you know health and safety first, um, and it should be a really good run of games. So drop your score predictions down below so we can carry on with our predictions league and really um, get into the thick of things um, in this third match week. So we're going to go for for this song of the week it is quite an appropriate song, um, I would say, because it is basically the theme song. For Rocky Balboa um, and I guess you could say this is iconic I guess you could say that uh, you know it suits the, the theme but uh, here it goes trying hard now it's so hard now trying hard now oh he's ready gonna make a move yeah oh he's ready and making moves yeah 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 getting strong now won't be long now getting strong now gonna fly now flying high now Gonna fly, fly. Um, that's just a, a bit of a tune, to be fair. Getting fly now, gonna fly now. Um, but moving on, <laughs> the phrase of the week, as we mentioned, is float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, uh, and sting like a hornet, much better. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm going with that for Brentford fans. No, nope, I'm not having it. All right, just leave it out. Watford are the, the team to uh, pack the punch. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the phrase, that's the theme, and that's the song. So let's then get into the predictions for this round of games. And don't forget about the scoring system. Three points for a correct um, goal difference, and then the result. And then one point for the correct result, and then three, five points for the correct scoreline. So first up, we have at the Etihad Stadium... In Manchester, it's Manchester City versus Arsenal. 12.30 kickoff on the 28th of August. And I just don't see anything but a Man City win. Sorry, Arsenal fans, but, you know, City have battered you in the past. And I think they're going to do it again here, if I'm perfectly honest. So, you know, it's, it's not great for the neutral because we want a competitive game. But City are just so strong. So Manchester City 3, Arsenal 1. And I reckon, in terms of goal scorers here for the game, we shall say a goal for Arsenal to kick things off from centre-back Pablo Mari. But then Man City get their goals through Raheem Sterling, who seems to always score versus Arsenal. Also, we're going to have a goal from Bernardo Silva. And lastly, Riyad Mahrez. All right, let's move on to the next matchup between Aston Villa and Brentford. And, of course, this one sees the teams go up against each other, the former uh, Brentford manager, Dean Smith. Um, and, you know, there's been a few links between these two clubs. You know, Esri Concer used to play for Brentford. Ollie Watkins used to play for Brentford. So it should be a really interesting clash. Um, I think that this could be a winnable game, though, for Villa with the home crowd they're going to be up for it after that Newcastle game. Um, I think they, they have a strong one here. And I, I think that Brentford can go for it. But, yeah, Villa are just looking quite strong in terms of their squad right now. Um, so I'm saying Aston Villa to win this one by three goals to one. And the first goal for Aston Villa comes from Triore. Uh, and then the second goal for Aston Villa is none other than Danny Ings. And the final goal for Aston Villa will be the winger that is newly signed Leon Bailey. But the goal to bring back a consolation for Brentford 
This time is Ivan Tony. Now we go on to the game that is not at Villa Park in Birmingham, but instead in Falmer, and it's the Amex Stadium. It is Brighton versus Everton on the south coast, and another interesting game. I feel like Brighton could have an upset here, but I'm just gonna, you know, kind of hedge my bets a little bit more. I mean, I could go with a nil-nil, but I think actually I'm gonna go with an Everton win because they actually did look really good in that win against Southampton, and yeah, I just fancy Everton to um, be a bit better away from home. So Brighton nil, Everton one, um, and the goal I think will come this time from in midfield. It's not Decore because you know he's had his moment. He whipped the shirt off. Instead, it's going to be, oh, Alan, the Brazilian. Okay, now we've got the matchup between Newcastle and Southampton. This is the game, of course, at St. James's Park, and it is another three o'clock kickoff. Now, Southampton going into this know that this is one of the most winnable and, you know, highly contested games they can go for. Obviously, the West Ham match was a bit of a shame for Newcastle. They were far too leaky in a game that, you know, they should have put to bed a bit earlier um but i don't know once again you know the home advantage could play a role southampton though you know you feel like they need to kind of get these games and really um and do the best out they can so i'm gonna back a draw um i i was very tempted to go with a southampton result but i'm just thinking maybe both of these teams will cancel each other out or should we go with newcastle now we're gonna go for a slight newcastle win because the home advantage does play a big part so we'll say Newcastle 2 Southampton 1 and uh, the goals here I think that the first one of the day for the Saints will come from the forward Che Adams but for Newcastle the goals are put in the back of the net by Joe Willock and then it's going to be in defence Federico Fernandez. he's done it against Southampton before and I think he'll do it again now, we've got the matchup between the teams of Norwich City and Leicester City. This is a very tough game for Norwich to really go, go for. Leicester have been an established team in the top four, uh, or at least the top five for the last few seasons. Um, and Leicester, you know, they were very impressive, I thought, against Wolves. Didn't score enough goals to kind of warrant their dominance. But And then, the, the, obviously, the West Ham game, I don't know what you kind of make of that. So, this is a much more, uh, you know, nailed on for Leicester fans, three points. But, you know, Norwich will once again have the home support. The Liverpool game was like, <laughs> they weren't going to ever have a chance. And uh, I guess the matchup um, with Man City was, was the same thing. But um, I, I just think Leicester are going to get the job done. Um, I think it's going to be very, very professional. And it'll end Norwich City nil, Leicester 3. Jamie Vardy to get the first one from a penalty. He always scores versus Norwich. And then the second goal for Leicester... I'm going to say comes from Harvey Barnes. And the third goal is going to be one of Kelechi Iheanacho or James Madison. We'll go with James Madison against his former team. Bit of a uh, controversy there. And he'll cup his ears to the away, to the uh, home fans. That would be quite uh, funny. Um, but anyway, moving on. We've got the match between West Ham and Palace. Another London derby uh, for Crystal Palace after that Brentford game. And I'm going to back a West Ham win because I think... At home, they're going to be strong. Palace, they're in a position of transition. They're going to take a while to kind of get going. Um, and despite Palace's decent record against West Ham, I think that this is a game that the London Stadium, that they will get the job done. So I'm going to say a narrow victory, um, or narrow enough for West Ham fans. But um, Palace won't score. And I'll say West Ham 2, Palace 0. And the goals here for the Hammers will come from Vladimir Sufal. And in midfield, it is Declan Rice, Rice, Rice. OK, moving on. Now we've got the game between Liverpool and Chelsea. Big game, of course. One of the standout big six f uh, clashes early on in the season. And I'm going to back Liverpool, I think. Um, they are probably going to get it done because, you know, the Anfield roar is just too strong. Or am I? No, I'm saying Chelsea. Shocked you there. But I'm backing Chelsea to get a 2-1 away win. With Liverpool scoring first, and once again it's Mohamed Salah, but Chelsea will get their goals through in the forward line. It's, believe it or not, Romelu Lukaku, his first goal for Chelsea in my opinion. And then 
The second goal for the Blues comes from the midfielder Kai Havertz. A historic and big statement win for Thomas Tuchel's men. And now we have the match between Burnley and Leeds. This is at Turf Moor. Two o'clock kickoff on Sunday. Obviously, Leeds, they're going to be favourites for this one. But we'll see. Sky Sports game. I'm going to back Leeds, but I think Burnley will make it difficult. Um, Leeds, obviously, were just so leaky in that Man United game. And then against Everton, I guess you could say that, you know, Everton have got a good attack. There's no doubt in that. I think this is a even better chance of a clean sheet. Um, because Burnley just haven't been scoring enough goals. And even that goal against Brighton, you know, how that stood, I will never know, because he clearly pushes over Neil Morpie. But anyway, you know, VAR does what it wants sometimes. And uh, let's see if Burnley can uh, can do what they want, which is uh, to get a win. But I think Leeds are just too strong. Burnley nil, Leeds 2, and uh, Rodrigo to get the first one. And then the second one for Leeds United is, again, unbelievably, Luke Ayling. OK, now we've got the match between Tottenham Hotspur and Watford. And I'm absolutely outraged because, all right, fair enough, you put our game against Brighton on Sky Sports, but then Spurs v Watford, come on, you move it to a Sunday and you don't put it on the Sky. That's a much better game than Burnley Leeds. But anyway, we move on. Um, this is in a, another really tough, difficult game. I mentioned how the Villa game at the start of the season was hard. We got that win. And this game is going to be another step up, it's for sure. So I'm not feeling too confident, despite... You know, my optimism, despite the way that our kind of players have been gelling, and Spurs are a very good team. You know, I, I know that you know Harry Kane is probably not going to be, um, you know, in in the team. But look, Son is still great. You know, Ali's going to re probably revive his career. They've got still a lot of quality. So do not rule out Tottenham. It would be a very uh, unwise thing to do. So right now, I'm backing. A Tottenham win, but I don't want to say it. I don't want to. Um, I'm going to say Spurs 2, Watford 0, uh, and the goal is from Delhi Ali, who unfortunately always scores against us, and also Son Hyung Min, but I don't want to say it. Um, moving on, though, we've got the game between Wolves and Manchester United, the last one of the week, uh, and let me just get you my charger so I don't run out of battery. Bear with people. Uh, Okie dokie. We shall be with you in a sec. And I'll be interested as well to see whether or not we play our away kit, um, our red away kit against Tottenham, because, you know, why not? Um, but we could easily wear this kit that I'm wearing right now, because, of course, there's no kit clash with Tottenham. Um, oh, my days, what's going on? Apologies for this, people. We're just trying to plug it in. Um, we will get there in the end. Okay. We're good to go. We're good to go. That's fine. Um, yeah, as I was saying, I think Spurs will get the job done. I think Wolves Man United, though, could be an interesting one. Because, yeah, all right, Wolves aren't filling me with confidence right now. But they have beaten Man United over the past. And, you know, they, they've found ways of beating them. And don't rule out Raul Jimenez in this game. And, of course, Neves actually did get linked with a move to Manchester United. But... He's, you know, scored an absolute screamer before in this match. So watch out for him, the Portuguese maestro. But in Molyneux, at Wolverhampton, I'm backing a Manchester United result. I think they got enough to get this one done. And Wolves will really go for it, but just not quite enough. So Wolves to lose by zero goals to one. And the goal for Manchester United comes from the attacking fullback, Luke Shaw. And that is for sure my predictions for week three of the new season. Thanks for watching. Get yours in the comment section below. And of course, make sure you get the comments and I will tally up that prediction table and it will look all nice and juicy heading into week number four. But uh, yeah, hope you have enjoyed. Um, just a brief one this week because, you know, I'm just getting through the fixtures, no messing about. But there's some really fascinating games in there to, uh, to talk about, especially Liverpool-Chelsea. Um, Tottenham Watford because you never know we've beaten Spurs before but yeah it's going to be tough and of course Man City versus Arsenal can the Emirates or sorry can you know Arsenal go back to the Emirates with a you know favourable result against the current champions they don't often have a good away big six record 
But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.